So what I always go over and tell you guys, whenever I'm doing a gospel music production song, the first thing that I'm always starting with is the loop. Instead of just playing along with the metronome, the loop kind of acts as the metronome. So check this out. I'm going to pull up premium church samples, right? We're going to find a shaker. So that's the main shaker right there. Quantize it, of course. All right, we're going to start with that shaker just for now. So that's the main shaker that we got. Now I'm going to lay keys on the track, right? So I want to use my Kronos piano for this. And what we're doing with these keys right now is we're establishing a foundation. Um, if you are new to gospel music production, I want you to watch how we're going to create this. We're establishing a foundation with the main keys. We are going somewhere. So we're going to turn on Dunamis Grand, and I'm going to turn that down just a little bit because we want it to be blended in, right? I'm going to add some bass in here, right? I want to use my new King Court Neo for the bass. So that is on 14, 15 and 16. Following along with me, we got that keys laid, we're laying bass. The next thing I'm going to add is a pad in this production. So the pad is kind of going to lay beneath everything, but it's going to add a warmth to the production to really make it feel good. Let's pull up Mosaic Pads. So Mosaic Pads is a library that I developed these sounds in Logic. I used the um, ES2 uh, designer to create these sounds. And I just shaped them all and, you know, created all the effects and stuff like that. All right, Mountain Pad feels like a winner to me. Feels good. And then we're going to let the pad fall out right there. But pad, keys, bass, 
perfect combination and perfect foundation, right? I typically add roads at the end, but I want to add roads in right now. And y'all know I love the Kronos roads. So let's check that out. Let's tap in with that. Because really what I want to show you guys is just what it feels like when you start adding key components of instruments together, almost like a live session. It really starts to paint the picture and you really start to get an idea of where we're going. And the organ that I'm using, we're going to be cutting on the Nord. I typically use the Nord organ. Um, I like the blend of it. And that's all we got right now is the Nord organ. So... All right, so we got the organ in there. I know what I'm gonna do for bass. I'm going to actually use the Nord bass. Um, Nord has a really, really smooth, good bass that I like to use. Um, this is what this bass sounds like. It actually sounds more like a real bass too. keep folding on that part if you haven't yet liked this video or if you're watching this uh live stream and you like what you're seeing please consider subscribing all right so we got the foundation of the track going on right um i'm going to add bells in here now right that's what we're going to do we're going to add some bells in and if you follow me you know the bells that i use is gospel bells 50 um, if you want Gospel Bells 50, um, click the link below or you can just go to my website and you can uh, get access to the bells. <laughs> Hey, 
So we got those bells in there. I'll quantize the bells real quick. Um, let me make sure I didn't miss any questions. Another thing that will help your workflow is if you group everything in sections, as you see, I have everything grouped together. So I'm able to work really, really fast and find the sounds that I use. All right, I like that. I want more movement though. I want to find a sound that has more movement in it. So we're going to go to synthesizers. So we're going to add that intro effect going into the verse. So pro tip, if you want your productions to go somewhere and have a little bit of movement and surprise, add certain pads and effects like this to kind of really um, paint on top of your production. Then we're gonna add it again somewhere in there. So that's a pad effect right there. All right, my boy Randy Jenkins has some amazing sounds for Logic, right? So I like to use his sounds as something to go underneath my productions. And I really like the way that they feel. They sound, I'll say they sound weird if you just listen to them by themselves, but you really have to know how to place them. Like, I don't know if everyone really knows how to use these sounds. You have to really like no production in, able, in order to use these sounds, I feel like. Like I wouldn't have known how to use these sounds, let's say five, six, seven years ago. Like, don't get me wrong. These sounds are killing. But in order to really get the uniqueness out of these sounds, you got to really know how to uh, use them. Like it's a language. All right. That's one of my go to sounds right there. The Vintage Brash 2. He uh, created that designed the heck out of it, you know? No? Again, this is going underneath the production. You can barely hear it, but it adds a warmth to the production like no other. Like it adds a certain mood to it, you know? Um, good question, uh, Marquis Brown. So this song is called In My Name by Ruth LaEntre. There is an original writer and uh, writer of this song, but that's the version that I'm doing by Ruth LaEntre. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe for me. Is recreating songs a good way to start production? I think yes. I think a better way to start production, if you're saying like getting into production, how I started in production is by going on YouTube, getting acapellas, putting them in my doll, in creating from that like I would take um, pop songs I would take R&B songs and I would drop them in my doll and I would create based off of what they were singing so it would just essentially be an empty vocal track you know so I think if you really really want to challenge yourself and figure out how to really make music sound good work with empty vocals with no music. Now, if you want to go the route of recreating productions, I think that is an amazing tip as well. 
just to kind of develop your ear. I think it's both and. I don't think it's one or the other. So that's a really, really good uh, question. Catch the line right here. Line again. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to turn down this synth because it's all about blending as well. How do you know how to set your volume for each sound you are using and make it blend? Delano, good question. I've done this enough to know what needs to be loud and what doesn't need to be loud. As an example, bells in general, it is a bright instrument, right? So I know I don't need to keep bells up here. Like I've made the mistake enough times of bouncing out uh, uh, production and the bells are super, super loud. So another thing is I've done production enough to know that auxiliary stuff like OSC squared, if I leave this up to the original volume of zero, zero, it's going to be super, super loud and piercing and it's going to sit on top of the mix. So I've learned with auxiliary stuff, tuck those things in the back. So I want to keep the foundation of the keys, somewhat of the loop and the bass and the organ like those foundational things, I want to keep those things out front and everything else, tuck it in the back. So if you see what I've done here, if you look at all of these tracks right here, the volume for all of these tracks are turned all the way down. They're at like, you know, negative 15, negative seven, negative six compared to, you know, I got the keys, I got the piano at zero and then I got the loop at zero nine. Um, and then, you know, the roads is at five. So the foundational stuff, we keep that out front and everything else, we pull that out and blend it to the back. I like this snare better for this song. That feels good right there. I love key drums so much. I'm not ashamed to say it. I really, really, really love key drums. Like that's, <laughs> that's like my favorite part of the process, like putting it all together and just being able to lay key drums over top of everything. Like it's, that's my favorite. So what I'm going to do with the strings is I'm going to start with a melody and then I'm going to stack on top of that melody and we're going to build with that. So we're starting with the cellos first, right?
So that's the melody line right there. That's kind of like the chords right there. Um, I'm going to name that full strings right there. Then I'm going to use some of Logic strings, right? And we're going to use Logic for... All right, that's all we got for tonight. Thank you guys for hanging out with me tonight. We're going to be doing more lives. We're going to be showing up. We're going to be doing this type of stuff more. Um, I hope to provide as much value as possible in the future. But again, thank you guys for hanging out tonight. Um, share this live with someone if you found some value. If you haven't yet liked this video, before I get off, like this video. Um, comment something down below for the algorithm's sake. Um, but that's all we got for tonight. We are out.